Making films is hard, but it's even harder when you're in a small apartment or your bedroom and just about every angle you can point a camera, there's a pile of laundry or an extremely blue wall. There are so many amazing filmmaking tutorials online and here on YouTube, but they all seem to have these massive modern photogenic houses and big open kitchens with marble islands, but we have clutter. We have weird colors on the walls and weird layouts. We have windows we can't put lights outside of because we're on the third story of an apartment building. So how can we use the space we do have to practice our shots and make the stuff we want to make? Today, I'll show you how you can create some awesome shots using some clever tricks with the camera, some clever tricks with the lights and some clever tricks with your brain. But look, the fact is, unless you do live in a flash modern house, you're going to struggle to get that super clean Apple TV beige core aesthetic. But that doesn't mean you can't get a little bit creative and make stuff look really, really good anyway. There's a couple of different ways to tackle this, right? The first of which is just embrace it. There are loads of great Hollywood movies that have this really rich, organic, lived-in look to them, and it's gorgeous. You might sometimes get frustrated with where you are in terms of filming, but if you flip your mindset for a second, it could be an advantage. It's a real apartment or a real bedroom that somebody actually lives in, so it's full of personality. So rather than fighting it, it might just be a matter of simply taking what you already have and then giving it some juice. Little subtle enhancements are sometimes all you need, but making this strategy work is a lot easier if you do lean into the organic, homely, hyper real aesthetic. So put the haze machine down for a moment. When you're going for this type of look, there are a few things that it might be useful to consider when it comes to your filmmaking choices. For example, using very natural looking lenses is a good start, maybe somewhere between the 25 and 50 millimeter range. Super long and super wide lenses tend to distort or enhance reality. We're trying to mimic reality, so lenses that see in a similar way to how our eyes do make sense. It's also a great idea to stop. No, like as in stop your lens down. If you're aiming for authentic, having deep focus allows all of these little real world details to work, it makes the viewer feel like they're really there. Instead of shooting everything wide open at like T2 or T1.8, trust me, take a leap of faith and crank that aperture down to T8. Sure, you'll need to crank your lights up, but that's part of the fun, right? You can also plan your lighting around this idea too. Make sure that you're trying to create light that's realistic and don't shy away from making it imperfect on purpose. That's a really good band name. Another great way to create mood and feeling in your project is music. We all know that. What we might not know is that audio have the best music. And as somebody that pretends to be good enough at music to play it, that's quite important to me. There's a great range of genres to choose from. There's Link Match AI, so you can paste in a link from YouTube or Spotify or wherever, and it'll find you something similar. So for example, the intro music for this video was inspired by this. You can download the whole track or individual stems and they've just added like 300,000 sound effects to their library, but that's not even the best part. Are you ready for this? You can get a whole year of Audio Pro for 70% off right now, which means all of your music and sound effects needs completely covered for the next year. And it's only 59 bucks. All you have to do is go down to the description, click the link and use the code HUNTER70 and you're literally sorted for a year. It's a complete no-brainer, especially if you're someone like me who really appreciates handcrafted great music, uh, but struggles when it starts to include more than two chords. A great trick to do this is to put lamps or windows in every shot that you can put them in, both so that you can create motivation for the lights you're actually using, but also just because it keeps everything very grounded in the real world. To put this into practice, have a look at this. I'm shooting on the FX30, so Super 35, with a vintage Pentax 28mm at f4. This is lit with just that lamp in the corner. There's no fancy light bulbs in it, no nothing. I just turned the lamp on. Is it quite dramatic and contrasty? Yeah. But if I wanted to make it a little brighter, all I would need to do is just 
boom over a gridded softbox or a light panel or something and wrap that light around a bit more. The lamp is our light source, so matching that look and tone is easy just by placing the light so that it's coming from a similar angle as the lamp and setting it to match the color temperature. Since we have a much more direct and controllable source now, we can either use it subtly by gently boosting the exposure on me, or we can crank it up and create a more interesting dynamic look. Either way here, I'm using the clutter and weird walls and weird angles of this apartment to my advantage here. The books aren't just the things that happen to be on the wall there, they're helping me to create a mood. Also disclaimer, those clips were shot before I understood S-Log and as a result, they're noisier than a trombone falling off the Empire State Building. But there's also a different strategy. Don't embrace it and instead hide it. If you're gonna go the hide it route, it's gonna require some creative problem solving for sure. And one thing I found really useful is using references from somewhere like Frameset or Shot Deck, just because being able to visually see what you're trying to achieve or thereabouts is really helpful. Maybe even get some crayons and draw a little picture of the frame so that you have something to compare it to and then walk around your house with your camera until you find something that works. But what practical things can we do to hide the clutter and the fact that we're in an apartment that actually gets used? Well, for starters, you could try playing with your aspect ratio. If you're shooting everything in 239, there's gonna be loads of stuff out here on the sides that gets included. Whereas if you shoot in four by three, all of a sudden you have a slightly taller frame, but you've cut out the sides. Obviously the aspect ratio is gonna make a massive difference from a storytelling perspective also, but it's worth having in mind if you're planning something. I know we all hate shooting vertical for social media, but you have to admit one of the few advantages of shooting a nine by 16 is that it cuts out basically everything other than a person. For balance, the vast majority of the videos that I upload, including this one, are in a two to one aspect ratio. That's not very helpful for hiding clutter, but it is much better to look at on a mobile phone screen. One other thing we can do is reverse the logic of my advice about embracing with lenses. If we wanna hide the fact we're in an apartment, shoot with longer lenses that are stopped down more, make that background blurry. And sure, you do lose some detail here and you're gonna to need to get creative with spacing in terms of how far away the camera can be. But if you wanna focus in on an important character beat or a specific reaction, isolating your subject can help a lot. But Using long lenses and shallow depth of field are not the only ways to direct your viewer's eyeballs around the screen. Blocking and lighting also make a massive difference and that's the real trick here. Let's take a look at a mildly over the top example to see what I mean. Here, the background is cluttered for sure. There's like stuff on the walls, there's cabinetry. It's not a great backdrop. But if we make that background disappear by just bashing it with blue light, all of a sudden it's not really that cluttered because our brain just goes blue. Using RGB lights and gels and color washes is a great way to impress your high school English teacher with your use of symbolism, but it's also a really good way to get a background to look a bit more balanced. If you match that with some basic color theory, you're golden. Get it? Obviously that's a very heavy handed example and I don't have the right gels, so I am just using RGB lights, but let your brain off the leash for a minute and chew this idea around up there. Maybe you do get the hazer out and you just blast the background into a blue mist. Or maybe it's not color, but it's light. If you have a really nasty hallway in the background, you could just flag it off as much as possible, make it really dark and then stick a candle halfway down it for depth. Playing with light and color can really transform a space into to just about anything you want it to be. And when you combine that with lens selection and where you're pointing your camera, it's pretty powerful. And all it takes is spending a few afternoons fiddling around with whatever gear you happen to have and practicing. In fact, even better than just messing around practicing, why not come up with a few little stories? And then instead of just having test clips, you can have microfilms, which you can learn more about here. So, somewhere, maybe over. Is it? Stay hydrated and create art. <laughs>